Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's craft meeting. We have several different things on the agenda today. Our first item on the agenda is the literary form for fiction. Um, it was brought to my attention that someone had been changing some of the um, literary forms from fiction to novel. Uh, the catalogers wiki states that it is recommended, um, but this was a, something that was passed by database management. So it seems like this term is being um, misunderstood because um, when I talked with Deborah, who um, works with database management, she felt that the wording is unclear and that this is actually a requirement to use fiction instead of novel. And um, we were wondering what Scraft's feelings on this would be if they feel that um, the wording just needs to be updated or if we should uh, bring this back to database management to discuss further. So feel free to unmute yourselves and um, chime in on your opinions on this topic. Hi, Rachel. Um, Kathy from McKinley. I yes. thought that we were coding that as fiction instead of novels because of something with how the facets were displaying. It wasn't putting novels in with fiction. So that it was like they wanted to have like a fiction and a nonfiction back when the decision was made. And maybe I'm remembering this wrong. But if the discovery layer can actually do with whatever, um, with the coding, you know, so that possible fiction, I would be okay with changing it. But again, you know, I, if this is a requirement that we code it as fiction instead of novels, I'm on board with that too. Um, the issue did come up because of how the facets function, um, because they display fiction and novels separately as two different values, and this could be unclear to the patrons. So database management preferred it as one facet. Um, let's see, we do have some messages in the chat. Kathy, you were breaking up a bit, well, so I wasn't sure if I heard everything you said, but um, is there something else that you wanted to add after you were talking about the facets? Um, other than with whatever we decide, I'm on board with, you know, whether we stick with fiction or we need novels and as a choice. Okay. Let's see, we do have some comments in the chat. Michelle London says she remembers discussing this at CAM many years ago, and we decided um, to use one instead of fiction for the same reasons as Kathy. It had to do with the facets. Heather would say recommended doesn't sound like it is mandatory, like there may be some flexibility there, and I would lean toward rewording the page. Um, Lynn Rubio says, if it is a requirement, I think it should be clear that it's a requirement. I agree with, or Michelle says, I agree with Heather and Lynn. Uh, Lauren says that she votes to update the page's wording that it is a requirement. And Adrian says she agrees with the above. Uh, Nora agrees with changing it to requirement. Okay. Um, so it sounds like everyone is just in agreement with changing the wording. Is that correct? Hi, Rachel. It's Tammy. I agree, but I also think that maybe um, for a future project for Scrap, we should go through the wiki because I don't think this is the only instance where something is actually required and the word recommended is used instead. I can't yeah. think of exactly where it was, but it seems to me there was something in the past that I was questioning. So could that be a future project for Scrap? 
Yeah, definitely. We definitely need some things to do next year. We can always add reviewing the uh, wiki to the agenda. So I will make note that we can do that next year. One second, I'm just writing down what Tammy said. Okay, so we have some more comments in the chat. Uh, Lynn asks, in the facets, can short stories and novels be differentiated? Um, I'm going to have to do some research into that, Lynn. I'm not sure how that looks right now. Um, I'll have to see how short stories is displayed. And Heather says, I like that idea, Tammy. I think there were some other instances where I thought the wording needed to be updated. Okay, so um, do the scrap members feel they need to pass a motion on this or should I just go ahead and update the wording on the wiki? I think it can just be updated. Okay, great. I agree. Right. <laughs> great. So the next thing on the agenda, uh, should CCS add local genre headings for different types of manga and which ones should be included? So in the uh, agenda, I've included the list of the LCSH and uh, LCGFT manga headings and i found a list of um manga genres which um basically according to different age groups on a website for manga genres and demographics um, i did see some others that listed things like um action or adventure manga and things like this but um this list looked like it was in alignment with what um, the LCSH and LCGFT terms are already. So um, looking at these terms, uh, were there any that interest you in um, including them as local genre headings that you would want to vote on and recommend to CAM that we add new genre headings? Uh, I have a question. Are these terms that people are searching for in the catalog now? I don't know. Um, I didn't take time to look into that. I can definitely um, do that for next year if you'd like to uh, wait um, on voting on that. We can get that research done. Um, I ask because it, it seems to me kind of odd. Uh, an unnecessary distinction. Um, I don't see the usefulness of separating it um, by gender. And if it is, you know, distinguished by age group, that's probably going to be in a different shelf location anyway. Um, but I would be really interested to hear what other folks think. Why wouldn't we just choose to start using the demographic field as opposed to cramming them into genre headings? So in the demographic field, which which field is that? You know, off the top of your head? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but it is one of the, I don't know, is that one of the 330s, 340s, or 350s? I, it, there's a bunch of them in the 300s, the um, RDA fields, the demographic fields that we're not using. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> 385 or 386. 
I'm not sure if those in, are indexed. I'll have to look into that. I had a question, Rachel, mm -hmm. about yes. when we state things are allowed in bib records, um, does that fall a responsibility on a cataloger? If I go into a bib and I'm going to add an item to an existing bib and one of those terms are on the bib, like say Gikaga and I know that my book fits the record. Do I still, is it still on me to go and look up, okay, what does Gig Kaiga mean again to make sure it fit my book? Or once it's on there, it's, I should just assume it's fine. Um, if it gets added, I would assume that it would be on the manga or, um, on in the publisher's information that it could be easily discovered that that's how it should be classified or okay so it would be the uh, cataloger's responsibility and um the cataloger's responsibility to, to to use their cataloger's judgment to look for it and add it okay Yeah, I intend to agree with um, what other people are saying about adding it to the audience characteristics fields or um, alternatively just the target audience in the fixed field. Um, it, it, these genres seem um, unnecessary to me and I feel like they could add more confusion and clutter to the catalog. I'm just going to search for our list of index fields one second. Okay, so we do not have the 385 indexed right now, which would be problematic if we were to add it, it would be not so, it wouldn't be useful. Um, 382 is indexed though, but that's I think for music, so not 385. Um, and we'd have to have the database completely re-indexed to add that in. Uh, it's not something we'd be able to do um, until new libraries are added, like in October when we add um, Mount Prospect and Waukegan. So I don't think it's necessarily the best option to just start using that. Um, we'd have to do more research to see if um, database management would also be interested in starting to use it, I think. And I'll have to talk to Deborah about that. I'm not sure I'm super comfortable designating whether uh, it should be for a male or a female to read. Right. I, I kind of have a little issue with that. The Gikaiga term, I'm actually a little bit more interested in because I have come across some items in our collection. We just have like a youth floor and an adult floor. The teen stuff is all mixed up with the adult manga on our floor. And I could see that being useful um, because some of the topics are a little bit more for a mature audience than a 13 year old, but I don't really feel comfortable saying whether a female or a male person should be interested in it. Um, I don't know how everybody else feels about that. <laughs> I feel more comfortable using those terms if they were on the item itself kind of like shonen and shoujo are now mm -hmm. because I don't read enough manga to make those distinctions and I don't know how many libraries have staff that would be 
willing or able to go through every manga ordered and give it one of those. I think uh, we in the fixed fields coding, we are able to differentiate youth audience, teen audience, adult audience. So I think that may be more helpful. Um, or if you're using shelf location or collection information for adult or teen or youth. I mean, so we have some things that we can do with that already that we're working with. All right, I do have the um, audience field in the leader too. Um, so making sure that is properly applied for the juvenile fiction or the juvenile manga also handles that. So um, see, we do have some comments in the chat. And so says that she thinks the demographic terms are on the items themselves um, for what it's worth. She doesn't think we'd be making the judgment call ourselves. Um, and uh, Sandy says that most manga have age ratings that are in the 521. Is the 521 indexed? Yes, the 521 is indexed. Okay, so it sounds like um, no one is interested in adding these as new genre terms at this time, but um, I can do some research to see if people are searching for these terms. And um, if there's a significant amount of interest, we can discuss that at the next meeting. And it sounds like um, the ones that you would potentially be more interested in, Tammy mentioned Gekiga. Um, um, Michelle's commented in the chat, so just to clarify, I would be interested in adding the LCSH and LCGFT terms. We'd be allowed to use those, right? Yes, you're always allowed to use LCSH and LC. GFT terms that are existing. This is just for adding in any um, new ones that aren't already existing LCSH or LCGFT terms. Um, so some of these are in the list. I just included them already in the list because of um, the correspondence to the demographic. So um, we can come back to this at the next meeting next year. It will be the first meeting of the next fiscal year um, if we have any additional information to discuss about it. And um, for now, I think it would be great if everyone just pays attention to uh, making sure they add that information to the 521 field if it's not there. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to discuss on this agenda item? Rachel, given that we are going to have some new libraries coming online in the fall, would this be an appropriate time to start looking at the 385 field just overall? Um, no, we can definitely put that on the agenda um, for next year. I'll do some research into it. Um, I want to see how widely it's actually used right now, because I know that some of these demographic terms aren't, or some of these demographic fields in the 380s aren't used a lot by libraries yet. Um, 
and I'd like to do some more research so that we can um, provide it to everyone before next year's meeting. Okay. And I think another one worth looking at is the one um, for author demographics. We can definitely do some research into that. I know there's been some discussion on various different listservs and um, in conferences. There are some libraries that are using it and some that aren't, um, specifically because they feel that it's inappropriate to put author demographics in the records like that, to call out the authors if they don't necessarily want to be called out in that way. Um, but some people are finding it really useful for um, things like uh, diversity audits and stuff like that. So I will um, try to gather all the information I can on those fields. Thank you, Rachel. I don't know if I was looking at that so much as a public facing, more of a staff facing. Right. I can definitely see it useful for um, staff facing related work. I've definitely thought about using that myself to try to get some of the author demographics in so that we could try to create uh, the beginnings of an author diversity audit dashboard. Um, but that would be a lot of work and would be limited to the libraries that are doing existing diversity audits manually, I think, because there isn't much in the authority records right now. Uh, Sandra commented that in her limited time on the reference desk, she's been asked to find things like collections of short stories by women authors from India. So it sounds like that would be uh, useful. Is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss next year? One thing that I thought that could be a good topic for next year is um, discussing the um, statement that the DEI and metadata working group of Illinois uh, will be adding to the website. It's almost done. It will be on dis disability and accessibility subject headings. Um, and it will link to a um, table on existing LC subject headings and working group recommendations for um, how they could be improved. So examples are um, whether identity first or person first headings would be appropriate and this would depend on the uh, community's preference. So this is almost done. Um, and as soon as they um, have finalized it, we'll be adding this to a website that will be available for all libraries in Illinois to refer to. So um, next year we can take the time to um, review that statement on the headings and see if you'd be interested in adopting any of those suggestions for CCS. Does anyone have any questions or comments about that? Uh, Sandra asks if those changes are being proposed to SACO. Um, I'm not sure of the current state of any proposals for SACO right now for those individual terms. I know that um, Violet Fox has been working on uh, proposals for her um, website, through her website, in which a lot of people are working together on different proposals and suggestions. So some of them 
are probably in the list that they're working on, but I don't know if which specific ones are. some comments it sounds like a good project for next year okay so one thing i did want to do before we end is to review the list of scrap members and to see who is interested in um, coming back next year so we know how many more people we need to add to um the roster for next year so i'm just going to go through the list and if you could let me know um, in the chat or out loud if you're interested in coming back next year. That would be great. Um, so Michelle London. Uh, Michelle, uh, I see that you're saying that you're interested, but you think your term is up. Um, if we do need additional members, uh, we do add people on for additional years. So Tammy has been in scrap for four consecutive years. So um, if you're still interested in coming back next year, you can still fill out the form. We'd like everyone to fill out the form, even if this is um, your um, second or third year already. In case we need any additional members, we'll um, choose someone who's been on it for more than two years. Lynn Rubio? Okay, I see you're interested. Tammy, you have been on Scrap for four consecutive years. That's really great. Um, in case we do need you to come back another year, are you still interested? Great. Uh, Nora? Yeah. Adrian? Yes. Adrian, I don't see any comments from you. Maybe you stepped out of it. Okay. Oh, I said yes. Um, Can you not hear me? Oh, you did? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. Heather? Heather, will you be interested in? Oh, there. I see that in the chat. You say yes. Kathy? Great. Tracy, I see you are interested. You're not one of our current members, but I'd like to encourage you to please fill out our volunteer form when we send that out. Uh, it should be coming out in um, May. Um, and we ask that uh, you either choose to nominate yourself or the director of the library nominates who's interested. Um, if anyone else is interested, I know we've got some regular um, attendees to our scrap meetings that are not currently voting members of scrap please do fill out the form you're all welcome to become members of scrap um, we typically have people um, that have been in it come back because we don't have any new members but we'd like some new members um, to join if you're interested so please do fill out the form to volunteer um, to become a scrap member Is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss today? Rachel, I'm curious, what would happen if we had more people volunteer for scrap than seats on the committee? How would you make well, that decision? We're, we're going to look at how long um, someone has had a consecutive term. For example, Tammy has had four years. Um, 
as a member. So we would um, bring someone in that's new first um, before we bring Tammy back again in a pre in a new in a different year. So Adrian is another one that which has been on the um, in the group for three years. So if there's someone who's new, we would bring someone in to replace her before we would um, come back to Adrian. Hi, Rachel, I just like to say, you know, I'm always gonna attend the scrap meetings. So if somebody wants my voting seat, that's fine with me. <laughs> don't feel <laughs> like, oh, I don't wanna bump her out. Please, if you wanna participate, go ahead, I don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for uh, continuing to be scrap members um, for those that are interested. Uh, we actually haven't had a lot of people volunteer um, who are new, so we appreciate everyone who's interested in coming back again. Um, but uh, we do have some new libraries that have some catalogers with a lot of experience, so I do hope to bring in some new members from the new libraries soon. Well, um, so there's nothing else to discuss today, so um, we are going to adjourn the meeting. <laughs>